Well, right now we're in Gowanus Studios in Brooklyn, where I have sublet a studio for three months of intensive editing um, before going out to actually do principal photography. So we've been shooting Evolve Love for the last uh, year, off and on, and uh, and there's and now there's this kind of this wonderful opportunity to sort of explore the material and cut it and see what's working and then what, what's left to be shot. So I really like to do that when I make a longer film. Uh, one of the coolest things that's really been fun that I've just been cutting recently is I've been using a lot of my iPhone footage. And I've been, as I travel around, I just always have my, this I, the iPhone, the, the new one that shoots HD. And uh, so when I see something like anything to do with love on the sidewalk, graffiti, and I just grab it with my iPhone. And, it, it, and I'm cutting it in now in these kind of collage moments throughout the film. And I'm really, I'm really loving the look of it and the, the energy of it. It feels like a return to Super 8, which is really nice. So that's been, that's been really fun to work with that. And then just some powerful interviews. You know, um, I've been exploring the footage with the people from the uh, um, island nation of Kiribati and shooting with them and, uh, and, and editing their material. And they're uh, one of the islands that, that's in danger of drowning or being submerged due to climate change, global warming and sea level rise. And, uh, and I met them at, at Cancun at the Climate Summit. And they're just a wonderful people. And um, they did their, some of their traditional dances and they talk about how losing their land is not just about losing um, their, the land itself, it's also about the loss of their identity. And then you start to get a sense of how beautiful their culture is. And now looking at this, I'm feeling like I probably should try to get to Kiribati to film more, to actually go, you know, continue the conversation with the people that I met and actually you know witness their beautiful country firsthand and it really brings home uh, what's at stake with, with climate change I think the, the um, what's missing right now is the like the stories I feel like I have a lot of the weave around the big picture the ideas um, and uh, um, and a, a several excellent scenes that are scenes like the, the we went to the tar sands the Alberta tar sands and traveled with the indigenous people on a healing walk around the tar sands and that feels like there's, there's a scene there um, as well as the, the, the Cancun Climate Summit and Bolivia, going to Bolivia. So much of my work is about finding the hope in crisis and the climate crisis is one of the biggest crises as a humanity we, we're going to face as a human, human race. Um, Scared Sacred was about traveling to these ground zeros around the world looking for hope and crisis in the Hiroshima and New York City 9-11 and Afghanistan and Israel and Palestine and Bosnia all these individual ground zeros. Climate crisis turns the whole planet into a ground zero and so how do we find the hope in that? It's almost like all my work has been preparing me for this question. How can in fact that become a love story? How has the climate crisis intensified or deepened since I started shooting the film? And that's a, it's a very subjectively, of course, it's deepened for me because I've gone so deeply into the subject of the climate crisis. And that's been a real, uh, a real wake up call. You know, I mean, I'm looking at this footage over and over again and, uh, and you know, Bill McKibben talks about how, you know, so many climate scientists feel like they're in that kind of nightmare dream where there's like a scary monster that's looming over us and you keep trying to shout and no one can hear you no matter how loud you shout and you, you know, and you can't understand why people can, can't hear you, you shout but no words come out of your mouth. Um, and, and I'm really getting that sense of how we are on that wire right now. Um, and that's really sinking into me. And I get, you know, as I go deeper into it, and you know, it's, it's one thing to hear this in passing once in a while, but when you're just really looking at the facts and looking at the evidence and hearing the firsthand testimonies over and over and over again of personal people whose lives are going to be deeply affected if we don't do something soon. Um, so for me, it's, it's, it's sinking into my bones. And then the whole understanding of love is this parallel journey of this film. What, is the diff what are the different forms of love? And that's also simultaneously a real gift the film is giving me as I dive into the understanding of love, from the personal love to the, to the uh, tribal love, to the planetary love, to the universal love, all these different forms of love, all so essential to what it is to be human, and so offering the tools to actually help us deal with the crisis that we're facing. So I'm, at the one hand, I'm diving into all this intense truth about you know how you know like wow we're in trouble 
Um, and at the same time, I'm getting all this, these tools for, of how to keep my heart open and, and transform it. And, and how to see it as a possibility as, for an evolutionary bounce or an evolutionary leap, which is really what the, the heart of the film is, evolving love. Thank you.